Hello and welcome to the Reds Report, Barnsley FC's longest running podcast. Proud to be part of the TalkSport Fans Network. As you can see on screen, for those of you watching on YouTube, um, Ian is in Tenerife, so we're just going to say hello to him. Hola. Um, Steve, that I'd like to say he's had a better offer, but basically is under instructions from the missus to go and pick him up from Rotherham somewhere. But not to worry, because uh, you'll probably recognise our guest. He is one of the voices of South Yorkshire football every Saturday afternoon, Tuesday evening, Wednesday evening, and Premier League football as well, of course, until the end of the season. It is, of course, Adam Oxley. Adam, how are you? Very well, thank you, uh, Carlo. Very good to be back. Very good. Um, listen, uh, you were on duty yesterday at Adams Park. And I was, my park, yep. Let, let's start at the beginning. The, the team sheet comes out, and um, I think a lot of people would have probably, you know, McAtee maybe not so, but definitely Nicky Cadden, uh, a, a very much a regular. That's the immediate choice for the left side of midfield. Um, so O'Keefe and Cosgrove uh, started. First of all, do we know if McAtee and Cadden, is that something long-term, or can we expect them back Tuesday, or have we heard anything? It's not long term. No, I asked uh, Neil Collins about that yesterday. Nicky Cadden was uh, a bit of illness, so there's uh, there's a good chance he could be involved. Uh, McAtee was, I think, uh, a little bit kind of longer, but there's a chance he could be back for next weekend or whatever else. So n- neither are long term, but clearly when they were both missing and not even on the bench at Wickham, you start getting a little worried because I know there's been a lot of conversation around the team that played Derby being probably the best team that Barnsley have. I'd have been all right with that team playing most weeks until the end of the season. Yeah. Um, and then when two two parts of that are missing, you do you do first fear the worst a little bit. But Wickham as opponents, you know, Cosgrove shaped up quite well against them. And then it was down to who would play on the left. And O'Keefe clearly got the nod out of position. Yeah. And um, Wickham... If, if you look at the table, sort of mid-table, and it, I think beforehand it was easy to say, oh, you know, it's it's just Wickham. But actually, I did a I did an interview with them uh, for their Wanderers TV earlier on in the week, and you know, prior to this, uh, nine match unbeaten at home, and I think especially in the first half, a difficult side to break down, weren't they? Very very sort of like almost a, a rigid type of of style of play but it definitely worked for him because nine matches unbeaten um they obviously scored on 16 minutes now you you've you've followed about it for many years but you've you've covered them a lot this season and this is probably one of the first seasons we don't need to worry don't we when Barnsley go behind because um in, in a lot of matches especially lately we have fallen behind and then and then turned in around what was the atmosphere like at Adams Park yesterday especially from the away fans Oh, for the I mean, for the majority of the game, the atmosphere was was great from the the away fans. I think, like you've just said, there was no mega worry when that first goal went in from the supporters. You know, nobody turned at all or any frustrations or anything like that. And then, as the kind of game went on, the the atmosphere just got just got better. But you know, that first I don't know twenty minutes or something like that, and the goal came just towards the end of that wasn't great I don't think either side were great but Barnsley certainly couldn't really get anything together and then the goal was just a sloppy one really there were opportunities to clear they go ahead you know you're not immediately worried but with Wickham's history you know it is they are an awkward team to play yeah shall we say they've got that tag from Gareth Ainsworth's time um and plenty of housery and time wasting and whatever else that follows from there. Well, Matt Bloomfield's changed them a little bit. There was a bit more, um, a bit of a different vibe yesterday. There wasn't as much rolling around and doing all that, even at various points. But it was still, it felt like head tennis at times in the first half um, was, was the nature of the game. And Barnsley operated best when they got the ball down when they started getting it out wide, when they could play a little bit more football. Um, and then clearly the equaliser on the stroke of half time was was set set the tone a little bit more. Yeah, definitely. There he is. Look, um, Steve has joined us. Uh, taxi duty's over, pal. Taxi duty's over, everything sorted. Happy wife, <laughs> happy life, job done. Like 
I like it. And um, we were just talking, Steve, about um, it, it's a difficult place to go, Wickham. Uh, Adam Spark, nine matches unbeaten before us. I think typified by their captain, Josh Scowen, just yesterday. I learned that they call him the mop because literally in midfield, he likes to probably play a little bit further upfield. But in midfield, especially in the early stages, he dictated it a little bit, didn't he, Steve? When we right. talked about the first 20 minutes. We found it hard to get going and find any sort of rhythm because they were often quicker to that second ball. And Josh Scowen does what Josh Scowen does best, and that's making a nuisance of himself and, and stopping the opponent building anything. Still a still a brilliant player, I think, uh, Josh Scowen. Um, definitely too good for League One. Should be a championship player. Um, always liked him when he played for us. Uh, that sort of defensive midfield role, which managers, and they said it on commentary, managers always seem to play him in that role. But you could play him possibly as a number 10 because he can get forward, he can pick a pass, he can he can really strike a ball when he wants to. Um, always been an admirer of Josh Cowan and I'd, uh, I've got to say, I'd take him back tomorrow. Mm. Um, Adam, there are a lot of cliches in football. It's a game of two halves and blah, blah, blah. The timing of goals. You know, people yeah. say it's the right time to score. Yes, that, you mentioned earlier, 60 minutes, they go ahead. No better way than to equalise and to go into the break, scoring on 45 plus two. So in the 47th minute, just before half time, through a, a Sam Cosgrove goal. Um, I haven't played at that level. I don't think any of us have. But it, it, when we have played with the fat or fit reds, whatever we call it, Steve, it, it, it does really drag you down. When you, you look at the clock and you think a couple of minutes and you're holding on to a home lead and then suddenly you have to go in 1-1. One, one, the the energy changes, doesn't it? The 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 whole mindset changes. Um, Cosgrove again, Adam. I mean, it was uh, his goal of the season at home versus Wickham with the antics of the goalkeeper. Um, but yesterday, I mean, it was a it was a fantastic corner that, that sort of you know that, that, that flew in. But um, not much you can say about the goal other than well taken. Yeah, I mean the fact that he followed it in well. I mean, Luca Connell's. Um, free kick was free kick, sorry, yeah. exceptional. Yeah, no, like, it, yeah, it was a shame that literally a couple of centimeters lower and probably kissed the underside of the bar and gone in himself. So it was a wonderful free kick and nice to see him delivering that. But yeah, good reactions. I mean, there's a bit of confusion in the stadium. Um, I know the guys, um, Matt and, and Callum from the club, thought it was Donovan Pines who got the touch. The announcer yeah. at Adams Park called it as Donovan Pines. They made me sweat because I called it as Cosgrove and I was like, have I got it wrong? But it was close. I've seen it back on the replay and they both go for it at the same time. But no, the, the fact that you got two monsters of blokes following that in, making sure that Barnsley go in level, really important timing-wise, really important timing-wise, which again, you saw at the start of the second half, you know, soft goal for their second, yeah. but Barnsley then got on terms pretty quickly. So... It wasn't allowed to, to to get any worse or there was no panic. But yeah, I, it, timing of goals was certainly something I talked about with Neil Collins after the game. Mm. Um, Steve, I mean, Adam just mentioned it. Um, timing of the goals. We go behind again um, in the 52nd minute and literally four minutes later, Donovan Pines. Now, I, I feel since Pines signed, we've built him up to be the next John Stones almost. You know, a boy done good. Um, that's before he even kicked the ball. Shaky first half on his debut, but really settled in the second half. Um, and now we start scoring goals, Steve. Surely we can't have made a really good buy in the January window. Um, <laughs> it, was, it wasn't the striker's goal, but right place, right time, wasn't it, for the big defender? Yeah, of course it was. He, he yet again, well, he, he played continuing from his first game. Like you say, he was a bit shaky first half. Second half came into his own, made some runs, some nice passes. And he just continued that yesterday. Um, he, knew, he knows when to make a pass. He knows when to keep hold at ball and to push forward. Uh, he is getting into some attacking positions. Um, yeah, I think it, I don't want to, I don't want to kiss a death. But no. he looks <laughs> like, he does look like a really, really good signing. And now that back three for me, that's the best back three we've had all well all season, definitely, yeah. and can go forward. Um, he just looks, he just looks uh, for a big lad, a really, really good player. 
Yeah, I mean, it's decision making, isn't it? It's if there is a long pass, he'll do it. But if it's a simple back pass to the keeper or sideways, it seems that his, his aerial uh, dominance is, is clear to see. But it's what he does next that I think he keeps it simple. And I think that's the best way to sort of settle in, isn't it? Um, I hope we're going to get the uh, Bambo Diaby song back for yes. Donovan Pines. I'm not going to sing it now because obviously there's children listening. It's before Watershed. <laughs> but it'd be nice to get that back, Fort Lad, wouldn't it? <laughs> For now, well, we just keep, for now, we just keep it simple with USA. I was about yes. to say, yeah, there was yeah. quite a lot of that yesterday. I, I yeah. quite like that. I thought that was pr pretty good. And everyone I, was getting on board. He loved it. I, yeah. I like it. I do. I like it. What makes me laugh, though, is at the beginning of the season, during these fan engagements, many, many fans were very like, oh, we're going to be all Americanized and we don't want to be like America. And we've got USA Mobile last season, a sponsor, and we don't want to go all American. We bring Donovan Pines in and everybody's singing USA, USA. USA. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so again, we equalize. So we've gone behind twice, Adam, uh, equalize. And then Corey O'Keefe, I mean, Normally, we've seen him early on in the season, definitely on the right-hand side, when obviously Jordan Williams was part of the back three, and he filled in on the left. Um, great goal, wasn't it? And and what a way to say to, 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 to Neil Collins, like, I can do this if you want, when Cannon's not available or even when he is. Yeah, no, we, we were, I, I heard the, the last episode, I know you were talking about the fact that uh, there is only Nicky Cadden, who's that natural out on the left. So when he's not there, you are thinking, who goes out there, you know, you could put Earl out there and bring McCart in, but I, like Steve says, I think that back yeah, it's spoiling, three, wasn't it? Yeah, spoiling. that back three looks really good. And the point is that back three are all Barnsley players. So, and McCart isn't and as, as decent as McCart's been. If push comes to shove, that happens. Williams is a more natural right wing back. So that works better on the right. He is a better right wing back than Corey O'Keefe, I think, when you take into account going forward and staying back. But yesterday, um, Corey O'Keefe did his chances of, of playing and get involved no harm at all. I thought he was good. I thought after after the red card incident that he was involved in, he got plenty of stick from the fans on the on his side of the, the field. Um, and, and that kind of spurred him on even more. But, you know, Jordan Williams is one of his two assists on the day. Lovely finish from, from O'Keefe. Um, I thought that was that was excellent. I thought he, he worked that channel really well. He was linking up little one twos and other bits coming off the play, um, and it was important because you know, on, get goal ahead, then the red card comes, game done, game mm. done. No, from that point, I, no worry. I was really surprised by that red card incident, um, and it might be my age and. He clearly kicks him. I didn't think O'Keefe wasn't rolling around looking for, you know, an, an Emmy or an Oscar. He literally, he, he was hurt, but, you know, he, he got back up. The stick he got, Steve, is that just a football thing that I'll have to get used to? Because I thought, it's it's not well, like he got him sent off. It was his own actions. He kicked a player. Like, he'd been on. Uh, if you were watching in the ground and it happened that quick, uh you probably didn't think there were much in it. You only it's only when you saw it replays or and they slowed yeah. it down if you're watching it on telly. I still haven't that, seen a replay, so I literally still oh, right, like, yeah. It, it happened so quickly. Yeah. And obviously this is a lad that had literally just been subbed on. Yeah. So we can it, make a triple change trying to affect the game. And I think that was his first he might not have even it was his first ball. touch. It, yeah. No, it was his first touch on O'Keefe's ankle oh, Keith, is what it were. Uh but it, yeah, he definitely it were a little bit of handbags, to be honest, as Keith went through it. Oh, Keith jumped into him for when the ball came across. Um, but, yeah, it was just a little bit of petulance. Just like a little... I'm doing a little nick now with my foot, but you can't see it, can you? <laughs> I lift my leg up here. We're a little click like that with my oh, like foot. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> But anybody in ground probably were that quick. That's why he got the stick. You always get that sort of stick. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it is part and parcel of football. But yeah. anybody who uh, watched it then on a replay... No doubt. Intent were there. He went to kick him. Referee, straight line of sight, bang, gone. And it, it, it's timings again, isn't it? Because O'Keefe scores in the 65th minute. Three minutes later, uh, Wheeler gets sent off. And um, Conor Grant then puts the dagger straight into the heart of the Wickham fans and players, Adam. We, uh, what a strike that was, by the oh, way. What a finish. What a goal yeah. that was. Yeah, goal of the day. Um, it, always nice when the last goal, the clinching goal, is the one that you can kind of on commentary get a bit excited about and go mental about. Um, I 
thought the the goal kind of backed up his performance. Really, we've been asking and wanting the the fringe players at Barnsley to step up and push that first 11 more yeah. and I think we saw quite a bit of that yesterday with Cosgrove with O'Keefe and with Grant coming off the bench I thought the goal was fantastic but I actually really liked everything that he did I thought he was assured obviously Connell had been uh, ill a bit which we didn't know so Grant comes on and Herbie Kane drops back a bit and oh, it was just it it worked really well I was just really impressed with his touch and his composure um and you wouldn't worry say if one of those midfield three got injured on the strength of that that sub appearance yesterday if he had to come in and start a couple of games so yeah, yeah lots of you know a 40 win away from home is is obviously a positive but I thought there were loads of kind of sub positives yesterday for the rest yeah. of the season yeah I, you mentioned over there it it made me laugh because um I, I just had this feeling that um, Wheeler was sent on, a part of that, to say, rattle a few cages. <laughs> Our midfielder, Feld, was getting far more dominant and making things happen. And uh, Matt Bloomfield's decision then completely turned against him because, you know, a man down and, and a very assured performance. And then obviously the, the, the grand goal. And um, can we just have, um, Steve, I hope you said that. Um, I thought yesterday that Kane... And Connell especially, but Phillips as well. I thought they were just Rolls Royces doing the simple things again really, really well. But once we'd gone ahead, keeping the ball, creating chances, mixing things up, yeah. and it's it it's now it's it's gelling now, isn't it? I mean, Adam, you you've you've commentated on, on football and watched football long enough that I now feel and it's not because it's Wickham and we've won for two, but I now feel this 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 midfield, as it was yesterday. You start thinking back of that dominance last season where we said that midfield is probably the best in the division. And I go back now and 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 I'm not putting my mortgage on it just yet because we're hoping to sell the house. But I would say that that midfield yesterday, especially Kane and Connell, were Rolls Royces in a fleet of top of the range BMWs. Is, is, is that fair, Adam, or am I a bit biased? Um, I, I suspect there's a little bit of, of bias in there, but I thought they were, yeah, <laughs> but I thought they were excellent. I thought they were excellent. I know that Herbie Kane kind of took the, the man of the match accolades, etc. Um, afterwards, but they're, they're back to where they're back to where they were, you know, they, last year there were lots of discussion about the best midfield in League One. Um, you, you're talking about them in those, those kind of circles once again. And if they can stay fit, and if there's people like Grant that can come on and do cameos, and even Russell and whatever else, then that's great. But there's three players that, with uh, the the players in front and everything else, that can hopefully push Barnsley on to to really threaten the top two and 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 have a great chance of avoiding the playoffs, which would be fantastic. But yeah, it's great to see that they've they've built as the season's gone on. You know, Phillips's form's got better and better. Connell obviously was out, has got back in. He's getting better and better and better. And Herbie's been pretty steady. I, I think I'd still, I, I still think there's more in Herbie's locker. Than oh, what definitely. He's yeah. but there's yeah. always that. But what he has shown this year is definitely a level above, I think, you know, with his goal contributions and, and a few other bits and pieces and how he plays. But it's great to see that three at the right time, early March, Really seeming to be to be clicking because the rest of the team can work around that. And 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 and, and on the same note, Steve, if you look at the January window, the back three yesterday, two of those three only joined the club in January. Yeah, you know they, they've had a couple of months. Although Pines obviously had to wait for visa clearance and everything else. Um, because of Pines, we're not mentioning Josh Hill very much, but he looks like he's played for the for, for the club probably since the summer or even before. He's he's really just. It's, that's been a natural fit, hasn't it? I think as a fan, you know when somebody comes in that, yeah, that's going to work. And I think Josh Hill, early on, a little bit shaky, can we say? Maybe not, as, you know, but he definitely. Um, they're not Kitchen, Anderson and, and Thomas. But if these three, if you can keep hold of them and stay them together, then I don't think any of those three would be misplaced. Should we go up, Steve? Do you agree? No, it's, they've come in. I mean... Dejivni, his first game, he <laughs> yeah. was absolutely. You play better than him, Carlo, in that first game, if you would have gone on. Um, but for me, he's most improved. He's, he's my player at season now, head and shoulders, to be quite honest. Um, 
Earl's come in, Pines has come in, and they just look so assured between them. It's as though they've got that. They always say you've got to have that little bit of a connection with people you're playing with, and they just look to to know where each other is. The cover, uh, Earl has definitely got. He's got some skill about him because he's another one. He can move forward. He can pick a pass. Dejivni, we know, can move forward, pick a pass. And now Pines is showing that he can do exactly the same. And combine that with the fact that Phillips now is, yeah, definitely getting back to his. Don't you look at me like that, Mr. Oxley. <laughs> As you can see, president at fan club now, son. That's what it's all about. Very good. You know, Very good. He, he is now <laughs> getting back to his best. And he, he needed to because, you know, up to Christmas he was shocking. Um, Kane again is getting and showing what he can do, which I don't think he's done enough while he's been at Barnsley, but he's, he's certainly getting there now at the right time of the season. Connell, we missed at the beginning of the season, yeah. we know that, uh, because he's like that bit of glue in midfield. So you look at your back three, you look at your middle three now, um, and they they are probably all could make that step up to championship. They're not the positions personally that I would I would worry about. I'd like to bring a bit of cover in for midfield. But no, it, looking at promotion now, which, you know, it's in our hands. Yeah. It's all down to us now. Let's not throw it away. Um, but yeah, that we have got some players now that would take us to championship, definitely. Yeah. And Adam, I think... It's fair to say, isn't it, that these January buys that have come in have settled really well. Surely that is a sign that actually behind the scenes, we were worried a little bit, weren't we? Was it November, December, that awkward Kane interview? Is everything okay behind the scenes? I, I just draw the conclusion, well, it must be because new players wouldn't settle in maybe as quickly as Pines has done, as Earl has done, if there was that sort of going off behind the scenes. When you do your interviews, you know, the, 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 the post-match and the, the pre-match on the Thursday and on the Monday... Do you feel there is that, you know, feel good vibe behind the scenes as as, as what the fancy on the pitch as well? Certainly, at, at, at first team level, I know there's there's still various questions kind of above. And I know obviously CEO has been appointed now and yeah. roles have been filled, so we'll see how how that all settles down. But there's there's definitely a good vibe around Neil Collins and the staff. Um, I think he's done a fantastic job this year. I think he got um, a lot of... Uh, took a long time to win over a lot of people, whereas those same people, I think, were more easily sold on Michael Duff for whatever reason. But if you look at the trajectory and where Barnsley are at and actually look at the squad that Neil Collins has had to, to deal with, the fact that two of the back three are brand new and he's not had them up to this point and Barnsley are still knocking on second and look like have got a better chance of getting automatics this year than last year. Bearing in mind what everybody was thinking, you know, I think I think at certain times this year everyone would have been happy just to get in those playoffs yeah. and have a crack that way. Whereas the, the, the mindset now has completely flipped in this last month to go, now we can do this. And I think with the, the quality of the performances and everything that you guys have just talked about, there is a, a, a belief now around the group and in the fan base that things are building and that they can get there. And obviously, beating Derby helps and beating Bolton would uh, would very much help as well. Are you going to do another interview with Irby before end of season, just out of we'll, interest? We'll see if it needs it. You know, <laughs> if, if you get to a point where things are starting to, you, you're a little bit worried, we'll, we'll get Irby out. He'll say some crazy stuff. And it'll galvanise everyone again, yeah. and off we go. So we'll, yeah. we'll see. We, we've got that card, haven't we? We've got it there. It's there yeah. by the side if we need it. Save that one. Yeah, save it. <laughs> Done it and twice already this season. We've got it there for it for after. <laughs> and if you look at the goal scorer so far this season, obviously Devante Cole with seventeen is right up there. And Herbie came with nine. Now it, it takes penalties, so that will you know add to that as well. But still, uh, John McAtee's got seven. Phillips with six, and then you've got Cotter with four, then a couple with three, which is Cosgrove, O'Keefe. Styles, we're not even going to mention because he's obviously settled in really, really well in Sunderland. And Watters with three as well. Uh, Watters is an awkward one, isn't it? Because he's he seemed to be back with the 21s. Marsh came on for a bit of a last few minutes yesterday. He came on against Derby as well, I, I, I thought. Um, 
is it fair to say that he sometimes looks for different strikers, Steve? Or is it just, do you just think that the the, 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 the Watas transfer, obviously we had him alone, we then brought him in on a permanent, probably not worked as well as what we would have liked? I think his, his, his hands are pretty much tied when it comes to strikers. Uh, Cole, obviously his first name on sheet, and then it's whoever's going to play with him. Uh, McAtee, when he's fit, I would have thought, is usually the first choice to play with him. Then you've got Cosgrove. Um, when Jarlow's fit, I would have thought he's he's definitely in with the shout because of the season he's been having. Um, but you look you look at Waters and you look at Cosgrove to a certain extent, and you've got to ask what they've actually brought Waters especially. Um, when they've when they've had that opportunity, have they grabbed it with both hands? Have they tried, you know, hundred and ten percent usual adjectives? And with Waters, you've got to say, well, he's not really shown that, you know, he, he he's got it, or he's got that desire um, to make it with Barnsley. I don't know. It's it's a weird one because. Where is, I mean, he came from Cardiff, so he's obviously got some sort of pedigree and he's obviously done it previously. I was surprised we took him back after loan spell because he didn't really pull any trees up. But, you know, give, give the lad a chance and an opportunity. He actually plays for us now rather than on loan and you'd, you would think he'd be all fired up. But he's just not really... Uh, is that because he's not had much of a chance? Is that because when he has played midfield of being poor and he's not got any service? There's lots of factors, but at the minute, like you say, he's playing with under 21s, no way near first team. But I'd, like I said, Collins is really struggling for for strikers. You would have thought. Um, Adam, as 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 football goals, we're now getting to the business and March. Normally, I feel is where it not sort of like definitively gets decided, but this is where some team starts dropping off, some make a late run. I like to think as Barnsley, we've always been in that leading pack, but over the last few furlongs, if this was a, a horse race, we've been coming more to the front, more so than Bolton on Tuesday. I mean, they are they've played one more match as us, and have got three points, the three points above us. So a win on Tuesday. Uh, would uh, put us straight into third because our, our goal difference would be better as well. Um, Bolton themselves, uh, you know, a win at, at, at the weekend. As home matches go, I know we've talked a lot this season, but actually I, I, I spoke with, with Neil on your show, um, Adam, early on in the season, you know, maybe maybe a little bit, but we had some of the bigger teams, like he said. At home, I mean, Steve, you'll be there, but we don't fear anybody really when you're in the rich vein of form that you've that you've got. Um, same team, Adam. Would you go with what you saw? Because I know they're a completely different opponent, but I thought the energy, if we can impose our style of play, it don't matter if you play Portsmouth, Wickham, Orient, or Oxford. It's down to us, isn't it, to impose ourselves? Yeah, it, it is. I mean, if for me, if Cadden and McAtee were fit, they'd both come back in. If I'm being honest, um, I like I like McAtee a lot. I, I I wasn't at the Derby game. I understand he didn't have his most effective game. Look, people will have off games, um, but again, as well as O'Keefe did, Cadden's more natural out there. So that'll come down to fitness. It sounds like Cadden's got a chance and McAtee hasn't. If it is the same team as that what went to Wickham, fine. You know, I think Cosgrove's now got. A couple of goals in relatively quick succession, which is good. So his confidence will be up a bit. I think the fact that O'Keefe contributed so much at the weekend again will be good, and he'll be back in. I just think it sets it up as a as a fantastic game. I think there's there's plenty of needle between the two teams after the last couple of years and the and the playoffs. And you know, I know Michael Duff and Ian Everett certainly didn't see eye to eye. I, I think there's maybe not as much as that with Neil Collins, but there's still a bit of bit of spikiness uh, around it all isn't there yeah. um and they'll want to do one that they'll, they'll want to come and, uh, and and give it a good go it was a great game i was at um whatever the reebok is now called a, a few weeks <laughs> ago um and it was a really good game of football that barnsley were frustrated not to come away with with all three points um i i think this is probably a must not lose 
Yeah. But yeah. if yeah. if Barnsley could could win, could keep that momentum going, then great. And then that's above that's above Bolton. But you know, if Barnsley drew this game and played well, I, I wouldn't be as worried. You know, I, mm-hmm. I think Barnsley in a in a great position would still have a game in hand on on Derby. Um, and and they've obviously got other teams to play and Portsmouth coming up and whatever else. So it's exciting, you know, to 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 have put themselves in this position right now is is brilliant um, compared to what what this season could have looked like. Mm. Um, Steve, in the, if you look at the form table, so the last ten matches, uh, Portsmouth are first on goal difference with Barnsley second, uh, Bolton fifth. So we've taken twenty three out of a possible thirty, and they've taken eighteen out of a possible thirty. Um, it's 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 Tuesday night. Is that different on a Saturday? Normally, a few more people inside Oakwell. Last time against Derby, it's the old scarf day. As a fan, do you need a scarf day, or do you actually prefer it on a Tuesday night under the lights? I think for this this sort of game, um, stats mean no waste of time. You know, throw them out. Be ages to find them. Don't I know. Say I, I know you've put a lot of work into that, mate. But I hate to tell you this; it's useless. <laughs> um, it's Tuesday night. I haven't had a look at weather forecast. Um, they'll not want to play us on a Tuesday night because they'll they'll not bring as many fans as they would if it were Saturday. Um, obviously, flip to that is we probably won't have as many as we would on a Saturday, but we'll still have a hell of a lot more than them. Um, if it's peeing it down or if it's windy or anything like that, oh well, can be quite a daunting place when that wind's whipping about. Um, no, I think we've got a, a really, really good chance. Again, it's all in our, it's in his own hands. I think as away form has been better than his own form, but this last few games now we are showing, we're showing that fight, we're showing that resilience. We can go a goal behind, and as a fan, to be honest, you're not worried because you know that they can come back and they proved that last couple of games. So I think Tuesday night. Um, Bolton will be not looking forward to it at all uh, and I think we've got a really good chance of getting something out of the game I agree with Adam would I take a point now? no, you know what, I wouldn't normally I would have done but no, I think we can go for a win, definitely um, Before I go to my last question then uh, just give us the, uh, your uh, normal, Steve um, score forecast, first Barnsley scorer I'll go with a two-one Barnsley with um, two-one Barnsley. Are you sure? Two-one. Yeah, I know. What it's happened normally... to three-one? Well, I normally go three-one, but I don't want to. I don't want to get too confident because that's a dangerous thing in this game. So I'm going two-one, and I will go with Devante Cole. At a, just when we need him, hopefully Devante Cole's goals has come in patches this season. He's got a, a you know four or five matches he scores and then he's quiet for a bit. And I think what he's done, he's done all this on purpose. I reckon he's been pretty quiet. He works really hard. He's not been scoring, so we can March is going to be his month. So have yeah, Devante Cole. Have to change your medication, mate, by any chance? Yeah, I'm seeing the doctor tomorrow. That's right. Two <laughs> uh, nil. Yeah, and I think Mr. Pines. Is going to be the man on uh, yes. on Tuesday night. That's the one. Back post, Bausch, get in. Lovely I job. Like, I like it. Um, I mean, Adam, you said it, it's a game Barnsley don't want to lose because it keeps you in it, doesn't it? And I think that's 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 the main thing. Right. Yeah, yeah I think in terms of scores, by the way, that I'd have gone with that's either of your two. And interestingly, Devante Cole has now gone five without scoring for the first time this season. So oh, before well. the weekend, he'd only gone four without without scoring, and then found a goal. So the likelihood, if you look at the season as a whole, of him of him bagging is decent. Right. So and finally, here we go. Are you ready, Steve? Um, oh, it'd be a good one. Yeah. Um, I was watching the Manchester derby this afternoon, and yes. Barnsley lad John Stones marshalling the city's midfield. That made me think. Don't happen often. It happened this afternoon. If you could invite three. Barnsley born celebrities, football or non football, for a dinner party around a your new gaff, Steve, that I still haven't seen. And um, who would you choose? I'll go first so you can ever think. So, my first one would be John Stones, because I think for a lot of young people, a lad from Peniston who plays for Barnsley, you know, we've seen the pictures as a ball boy, didn't have a long stint in our first team before obviously going to Everton and then making that big move over to uh, to Manchester City. 
Um, I think it's it's a fairy tale, but I like it because I think it shows it can be done. And I think for a lot of young people, they need an example. They need and and not a fairy tale of well, you know, that is somebody who's done it, and and I like him. And I don't. You never see him in the papers for any gossip or, or you know he's just focused on football. My second one would be Sean Dooley. I watched The Stranger last week, and I'm actually quite mad with him. I'm not going to give anything away, but I was pretty mad with him. Uh, we've had him on the show before. We saw him at Wembley last year, and I think he's just an intensely nice bloke. Always up, you know, uh, for a couple of words. Um, and it's another one, isn't it? A Barnsley lad that is regularly in some of the best TV dramas that, that you see around. And my third one, uh, Michael Parkinson. Because I think, again, for a lad from Cuddeth, I believe, to have interviewed some of the biggest names in the world, in sport, in movies. You know, Barnsley is often the black sheep of the South Yorkshire or the Yorkshire family being behind Sheffield, being behind Leeds. You know, <laughs> e even Doncaster is a city now. So, you know, we're surrounded by it. I think, you know, th those three, for different reasons, uh, make you proud to be from here. And I'm not even from here. I just live here. Um, so, yeah, John Stones, Sean Dooley and Michael Parkinson would be mine. Adam Phillips Fan Club, President, who are you going for? Wow. Not like dropping it on you, is it? Um... I mean, there's nobody else famous from Barnsley, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why I went first, Adam. Thanks, Adam, for that, mate. That's very much appreciated. No, no, there, there what is... would I have? It's you you can have there are, there are. Dicky Bird, you can have no. Darren why North. would I want Dicky Bird? Yeah, no, I don't know. No. I'm just, I'm just no. saying. Sam um, Nixon is big in cooking. Straight now. off top of my head, then here we go. Straight off top of my head, uh, Brian Glover. Yeah. Oh. If people can remember Brian Glover, um, he's actually related to my wife. You know. You know. Mm -hmm. Is he? Yeah. Well, I never knew that. A relation of the Glovers. Yeah. But anyway, oh. keep okay. Going. There you go then. Um, Brian Glover definitely. Um, see, I, I don't know whether I'd go any ex-players. Would I go any ex-players? You could do. I might do. Danny Rose is doing well for Grimsby. You know what? Probably. Saying. And he's not really... Well, he is a... Well, good. Probably Mick McCarthy, because I, oh, yeah. I bet he's got some tales to tell. Well, he could go to the Spurs. That was going to be my shout. And then he could go to the Spurs, and then he can have dessert at Adam's party. Can't well, he? he'll not He'll not need to. He'll not need to, because my third one would actually be Adam, because, oh. and I'm not just saying this, because, I mean, you know, because he's on, but he always talks sense most of the time. Yeah. Uh, and I just think it, it'd be that that foil between Brian Glover and Mick McCarthy just to just to even it out a bit. And he's a secret Barnsley fan anyway, so he's not from Bath, but I will allow it because I like it. I like yeah. it. And yeah. I reckon, yeah you see. And I and I reckon I reckon that if if you were to do that, I've always said I think Adam just talks sense and he says how it is. And I, I, you need somebody like that. So no, I like it. Now Adam, you can't divide yourself, can I just say this? So who who would be around your dinner table? I'm not going to ask you what to cook. Just who are you going to invite? Well, like I said, I was going to go Big Mick for for for, for Barnsley folk, um, just because he'd have some fantastic stories. You can't yeah. be in the game for that long with without having that. Um, I, I love some of the, the shouts. To be fair, I think Parky's a clearly, you know, from my my sense, from a, a journalistic sense and a a reporter sense would be would be brilliant. Um and to be fair, I mean, why not why not get Dicky down? I mean Dicky could spin a few stories for mm. uh, for a little bit. He's been all over the world. He's yeah. he's done all that. And to be fair, if you brought them in, you could sit in the corner and just drink and listen. <laughs> that <laughs> sounds like a plan. I you like that. You wouldn't get a word in edgeways, would you? So you would be all right. You could just go and have a little cup, get a bit of food, have a drink, say hi chaps, and uh, and we'd all watch Kez. Beautiful. <laughs> Happy with that. I, I tell you, I, f I completely forgot the name, but you're better. Who was the Nottingham Forest goalkeeper on the on the uh, Clough Nigel uh, on the Cloughy? Crossley, Crossley, because he's bad. Uh, really. Yeah, yeah Mark, no, Mark. he's from yeah, Ireland, Mark, isn't he? I tell you what, yeah. Mark, Mark, Mark is a speaker because obviously I'm in the charity with him, so yeah. he would be he'd be a great guest because I've heard 
in some of these little bits that he does. I'm not meant to be one of his speaking events, but whenever he's been uh, been with us on on the walks, he does a good speech. And yeah, he'd be fantastic. Big norms. He does a cracking yeah. impression of Clough as well, doesn't he? He does a very good impression yeah. of Clough. He does a he very does. good impression of Cloughy. Uh, you mentioned you're walking, Adam. Now that the weather is sort of picking up a bit and daylight is you know staying longer a little bit, which which is always good. Um, what is in store for you? Because we know you're extremely very busy with your twins, who's been who've been very quiet. I don't know what you've given them, but we've not heard anything. From the twins, so they are all good. Uh, well, they, they they've been like locked in downstairs having a bit of food because they've, <laughs> they've been little little poops for most of the afternoon. So uh, we, we nearly got them throwing stuff on here. <laughs> you, but you, obviously you got the twins, which makes you a very 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 busy man. Anyway, then you're travelling up and down for BBC Radio Sheffield, to, to, you know, to provide commentary on, on on football heaven for for all the South Yorkshire teams. Um, what is next in store from a charity point of view? Because I know you don't like sitting still a lot, do you? No, no. I mean, I need to get the the, the finger sorted because I'm still. I've had some day surgery on my finger because that's still oh. remnants of rounders from last year. So I've got oh. stitches through a tendon in there. I'd, I'd explain more, but there may be people that are a bit squeamish. And to yeah. be honest, the the anaesthetic injections in the bottom of your finger. Oh well, no. No, no, that great. looks a bit like what Kenny Everett used to have when he used to do that television show with them great big hands. <laughs> you want one of them, Adam? That'd not be great. all right. Not great. So we need to get that sorted. I'm doing the I'm doing the Sheffield half marathon uh, with the Radio Sheffield lot in a couple of weeks. That's five weeks away. So I've been getting a run in today. Uh, so that's good. And I'm I don't know about the summer, but I'm gonna the Prostate United Challenge this year in uh, in October as it is now. I'm gonna try this year and do 10k a day. I've been working up to that, wow. so that'd be 10k every day in October. So that's that's the aim. As long as the health allows me, then that would be the the big thing this year because it's it's my 40th in the summer. So I think there'll be just it'll just be endless crying and parties. I think in the summer. <laughs> I like it. Well, you know who to invite to parties now. I hope you made a list of the people we've just uh, we've just mentioned. Um, Adam, thank you very much for joining us on a Sunday evening. Um, and, and go and see to the twins, and they, they can have an extra bit of chocolate or something because they've, they've been very good, haven't they? And they can't you... have any more, mate. They can't. Have... <laughs> We've got an ice cream farm this afternoon. They've had ice cream. My mum's pot round with some little buns. So they've oh. had some of that. So they're wired, mate. They're not having any more chocolate, though. They're not going to bed till midnight. <laughs> they're bouncing um, off walls. You are, at all, you are at Oakwell on Tuesday, Adam? I am, yes. Very much looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah. really looking forward to it. Should be a good one. Steve. Thank you, not for joining us, because you're here every week. But, you know, did you go and pick her up? Or have you left her aside at road so you could go faster? And oh, she's, up, she's upstairs, mate. She's upstairs. Oh, all, right, okay. all right. Well, say hello to Jackie. Thank you. Um, you have been listening to the Reds Report. Let's hope um, so that unbeaten run can continue as Barnsley face Bolton on Tuesday night. If you can't be there, why not listen to BBC Radio Sheffield? Because the commentator's quite good, you know. You've been listening to the Reds Report. <laughs> we'll be back next week. <laughs>